characters date way back. I like to say they, they date from the dawn of the disco era because my brother and I were kids and we'd make our own comics on typing paper and he would leave his unfinished comics laying around the house and he was the one that actually first did characters called Sam and Max and they were a dog and rabbit detective but their personalities were really different he'd leave his unfinished comics laying around in the family room and I'd pick them up and I'd kind of secretly finish them in a parody of his style so they started as a parody of, of the comics of, a, of an eight-year-old and that's how they started forgetting each other's names and I would draw their thumb on the wrong side of the hand on purpose and the perspective never made sense so it was just a a way of irritating my brother, which was the dawn of these characters. It was 1978, he wrote me this little document that said, I don't care about these characters, you can draw them from now on. And uh, he signed it, and I signed it, and our little scrawls are our kids' uh, uh, signatures. And uh, so I've still got that weird little piece of paper, which is, I'm sure, not legally binding, but what the hell. What I do here at Telltale is I create the technology that we use to build the games and that you use to play the games. So all the tools that we use to create every episode of the game, uh, my, me and my team make, and then the actual program that you run when you're playing the game is also from my, my team. What's neat about the Telltale engine is it allows us to make really story-based games. Ask the guys from Air Force One. Tell them they get the keys back once they say the magic word. Quiet, Max. It's the commissioner. Total collapse of the economy and downfall of Western civilization? Greek grinning head of John the Baptist and a pork pie hat stuffed in a rhinestone bowling bag. We're on our way. That have a lot of character and a lot of dialogue and a lot of animation. And it's like an interactive cartoon from beginning to end. And it's all in 3D, which is great. And you can make it really fast and, and iterate a lot. So it really allows the artists and the writers to, to really craft the game before we finish it and ship it out. We started the company in order to build out games based on great character and story. A good percentage of people come from LucasArts, that's where I started my career. Uh, and we were there to, uh, to work on some of the great story products that they were doing. Anyone that was into games for a long time knows that uh, the, the early games of LucasArts had a special feeling around them, comedy and, and attention to detail around story. Um, so we built a company that was able to uh, tell interactive stories and uh, what we've done is gone after licenses that we know have a charm and an integrity that uh, stand the test of time and it's more than just uh, blowing stuff up and, and or driving around but it's a, a more something people can connect with and more people can connect with. Um, it's a good direction for games to go. Well, for the duration of season one, I was really excited throughout the entire project about Sam Max. I, I never lost the drive to keep making it great. I love those characters. I love the kinds of adventures they get into. For me, Sam Max is very fulfilling because they can go in completely different directions every episode. They can always try new things. Nuclear reactors are nearing meltdown. And scores of pasty white nerds will be forced to go outdoors and socialize with normal people. So they can always try new things, and that's something that really appeals to me. I don't want to get stuck in a rut ever or keep doing the same thing. Swiss cheese, right? And be quick about it. Ordinarily, I hate yielding to extortion, but I have to admit I'm half charmed by the sheer spunk of that oily little burp. Where'd you put the cheese, Max? So that aspect of Sam Max makes me want to just keep coming up with new adventures with them, keep coming up with crazier things that they can do, and just keep challenging myself to think of things that haven't been done before. I'd like to develop a gambling addiction, starting now. Well, what do we have here? I'd say the circus was in town. But I know for a fact they won't be here till next Friday. So you must be here to play cards. I'm a person with a fairly short attention span as these things go, I think. You know I have the memory of a dry trout. Sadly, yes, I do. Working on one game for, you know, a, a year or two years or five years or whatever people in the industry do uh, is, is kind of scary to me, which is one reason why working episodically is actually really good because every episode of Santa Max is kind of different from, from the last one. We do them in a few months and then we move on to something else and there just isn't time to get bored. Do you ever consider that we might be card sharks? Or shark sharks, you know, the kind that eat people for being overconfident. My uh, responsibilities here at Telltale are, um, you know, overseeing the, the entire art production for Sam and Max and constantly in discussions and brainstorms and 
uh, director sessions with the environment artists. Uh, I'm pretty much in control of working with Steve Purcell and getting the character concepts going and overseeing the modeling and the animation process for these characters. I work with the designers to kind of mock up a roadmap for the entire game. So with the environment process, uh, I guess it all starts in the designer's heads. So uh, obviously they have certain locations in mind. When they start to design the puzzles, obviously they're gonna need certain objects, placement of objects in certain places in the environments. It's a little bit unique here because um, we kind of have to get things done really quickly. Obviously, need a really good concept, you know, think everything through. How much space do Sam and Max need to walk around in this environment? And get that all on the drawing. What usually happens is I'll do a couple drawings, and then uh, Steve's drawings come in a couple of days later, and I just throw mine out because his are, they're awesome. You know? Either that or, you know, I'll use what he did and I'll kind of build off that for what we need. I uh, went through and played the original game. I actually hadn't played it um, all the way through before, and I, I knew some of the music. It was written by my old colleague. Originally, they were talking about it being a little bit, a little bit darker, a little bit skewed for a slightly older audience, um, and maybe a little bit less cartoonish. So, um, to me, that translated into a little bit more of a hard jazz score. Fortunately, the scope of the project was large enough that uh, we were able to afford. Uh, hiring some live players to come in and add their um, talents to the score, and that you know the score is as much you know I share I share the credit for it with them because they brought so much uh, to those sessions, and um, you know it's amazing what three guys can do uh, to bring the score this time. I'm a little bit torn about what my favorite episodes are. I like. For me, the first time I saw the new version of Sam and Max's car, the DeSoto, driving down the street, I was so pleased because um, I had talked to Dave Bogan, the art director, about redesigning the car, and I had found a picture of a DeSoto online in 1960, and I had drawn on top of it on a, on a Wacom tablet and, and done a new kind of a rat rod design for it and sent it to him. And when I saw the the model of the car they built. I was so pleased and getting to see it for the first time driving down Sam and Max's street was really exciting for me. And my next favorite episode, Abe Lincoln Must Die, because it was just, for me, the absurdity of getting to hunt Abe Lincoln's statue from the Lincoln Memorial. It's, it's about as Sam and Max as you could get. The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected president of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. You've got to be me, you idiot. The level of absurdity that you want to see in a Sam and Max episode. Democracy? To all my hypnotic slaves. Great to get a chance to work with Telltale on, uh, on the Sam and Max series. Oh, you really know how to find the bright side of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Now let's go shoot something. 